So in this video, I'm going to be talking about balancing the pH of the body through dietary intervention. So first of all, we need to understand where does acid come from, uh, where does base come from, and how does it exist in the body? So the acid in our body is hydrogen ions, mostly. Um, they exist as hydronium ions, which is H3O+. Plus. So most of the acid in your body is bound to water as H3O+. Plus. Okay, so hydrogen ions are the acid in the body. And then um, the base is citrate and bicarbonate, okay? So one milli equivalent of bicarbonate will inhibit one milli equivalent of acid or, or of the hydrogen ion. Um, one citrate molecule, however, can inhibit three uh, acid molecules. So just keep that in mind. Now, where do we get acid and where do we get base from the diet? So we get most of our hydrogen ions from animal foods, um, meat, eggs, cheese, but also grains. So those are your acidic foods. Um, and then your base, we get from fruits, vegetables, and mineral waters that contain either citrate or bicarbonate. Okay. So ideally for optimal health, you don't want to be excreting acid. Okay. So you actually want like a neutral um, excretion which is really around a pH of about seven. That's ideally what your urinary pH should be is about seven. Um, anytime you're lower than 6.8 to seven, you are excreting um, some acid, okay? Now, let's talk about basically what happens. So when you are consuming animal foods, they are high in sulfur-containing amino acids and it forms a lot of hydrogen ions. So we said that was the hydrogen ions was the acid. Sulfur has a negative charge. We can't breathe that out. The kidneys have to eliminate that. Um, but the kidneys have to maintain what's called electro neutrality. So when we ingest animal foods and we are having to get rid of that negatively charged sulfur molecule, we have to get rid of a positively charged cation like sodium, like magnesium or calcium, okay? So the more animal foods you consume, the more positively charged ions you need to get rid of that negatively charged sulfur and the more acid that you're forming, okay? And that acid will stimulate osteoclasts, which can break down our bones, and we cause us, to, cause us to lose things like calcium, magnesium, and sodium, okay? So when you don't balance out the acid load of animal foods and grains with things like fruits, vegetables, or either bicarbonate or citrate supplements or bicarbonate waters, then here's what's going, here's are some of the potential harms, okay? One, I had just said that you need to, you will lose more of the calcium uh, magnesium and sodium from bone to not only just get rid of the negatively charged sulfur, but also because the acid will stimulate the osteoclast to break down bone. Now the kidneys can get rid of 40 to 70 milli equivalents of acid before um, the body will retain acid and you have to breathe it out and deplete your bicarbonate stores. Okay. So, but the problem that even though you can do that, uh, even though you can get rid of 40 to 70 milli equivalents of acid before the body starts retaining acid. Um, in order to do that, there are a few harms that will happen. The body needs um, to strip connective tissue to make ammonia to get rid of the hydrogen ions, okay? By, it'll, the ammonia will bind the hydrogen ion and form ammonium. So ammonia is toxic to the kidneys and you're stripping connective tissue um, to get the glutamate and glycine to actually eliminate that acid out the kidneys. So the kidneys can eliminate 40 to 70 milli equivalents of acid before there's retention, but you're going to have to break down connective tissue to do that. And you're gonna produce ammonia, which is toxic to the kidneys, okay? And we don't know exactly when we say, when I say that, we don't exactly know how much and for how long and what how much harm will happen to the kidneys, but we know through animal studies that's not necessarily a good thing to produce a lot of ammonia in the kidneys, okay? Um, so three things that will happen, even though you can get rid of acid. Bone breaks down, you lose more minerals from the bone, you break down connective tissue, and you are producing ammonia, which is potentially toxic to the kidneys, okay? Um, all to get rid of that acid. So your body can do it, but as we just found out, there are harms. Now, the acid can also especially when it accumulates into interstitial fluid and in the cell, which happens before blood, because blood has a lot of buffers to buffer the acid. So you won't see acidosis 
in the blood until a long time after it's already been high in the interstitial fluid, which is the fluid around our cells and inside the cell. When we have accumulations of acid though in the interstitial fluid in the cell, that can lead to insulin resistance, okay, and diabetes. And so we have seen that actually giving, um, you know, sodium or, or potassium bicarbonate can improve insulin sensitivity um, and actually causing a mild acidosis can induce insulin resistance, okay? So we do know that this is a problem as well of having too much acid in the body. Now, when you start retaining the acid, you have to deplete bicarbonate in order to breathe it out. So yes, we can breathe out acid, but one bicarbonate molecule is lost per one acid. So in the long run, it's actually not going to, main, you're not gonna maintain pH by doing that because you are depleting your bicarbonate stores in order to do that, okay? So now, how do you potentially know if you have low-grade metabolic acidosis, okay? So before I had mentioned earlier, blood will stay normal pH before um, basically the interstitial fluid becomes acidic. So it, it maintains um, longer. So you can't really look at blood. Blood pH is not a good indicator of metabolic acidosis, okay? That's that's acid in the blood, that's acidemia, that's really bad. Once your pH is low, um, you're, you're in serious trouble. So I don't like to see a, a blood pH less than 7.42, really, optimally, um, but you won't be called metabolic, um, they say acidosis, but really it's acidemia, um, un unless the blood pH is somewhere around like 7.35, 7.34, that's really bad. Um, so bicarbonate levels are a little bit better indicator if you have low-grade metabolic acidosis. Optimal um, bicarb levels would be 27 to 32 milliequivalents. I don't really like to see bicarb less than 27 from an optimal perspective. Uh, um, you will have low urinary pH uh, when you have too much acid. So really, I don't like to see anything less than 6.8 uh, and definitely not less than 6. Um, because if you're less than 6 pH, you're re probably retaining 70 milliequivalents of acid or more, which again, will then cause retention of acid in the body. Um, and, and really even less than 6.5 isn't good either. Uh, so low urinary citrate is another marker of having too much acid in the body, okay? Because remember I said citrate is base and citrate forms bicarbonate and one citrate molecule can bind three acids, three acid molecules. If you have low urinary citrate, that increases the risk of kidney stones because instead of that citrate binding calcium, you don't have it anymore, that calcium is going to bind to oxalic acid and you're going to form more calcium oxalate kidney stones. So that's another harm of having too much acid in the body is kidney stones go up, not just calcium oxalate, but also uric acid uh, goes up as well because the, the lower urinary pH increases that. So um, an increase in uh, potential kidney stones there is a problem too. Now, besides we talked about, you know, some of these other things, these kidney, so kidney stones, um, connective tissue loss, potentially muscle loss, insulin resistance. Um, there, there are other harms too in regards to too much acid in the body. Uh, and we'll, I'll talk some, some about that in some different videos. And I'll also talk about the performance benefits of taking things like sodium uh, bicarbonate and potassium bicarbonate and sodium citrate and potassium citrate and things like that. But let's kind of sort of cover basically how much acid is in certain foods. So three and a half ounces of beef is going to be about eight milli equivalents of acid, okay? Um, and basically there's ways to try to figure out like how much bicarbonate will eliminate uh, acid. So one, one milli equivalent of bicarbonate eliminates one milli equivalent of acid, okay? There is 610 um, milligrams of bicarbonate um, that would eliminate 10 milli equivalents of acid, okay? 610 milli, uh, milligrams of bicarbonate, which is about 835 milligrams of sodium bicarbonate will eliminate 10 milli equivalents of acid in the body. And I, and, and I just said that uh, three and a half ounces of beef is about eight milli equivalents of acid, okay? So you almost need um, like 700 milligrams of like sodium or potassium bicarbonate. You need a little bit more for potassium bicarbonate. 
um, to eliminate just the acid from three and a half ounces of beef, okay? Egg yolks are very acidic too. Um, Parmesan cheese is like the most acidic food. Uh, it, it, it's basically 34 milli equivalents of acid per three and a half ounces of Parmesan cheese. Okay, and obviously now most people aren't consuming three and a half ounces of Parmesan cheese, but a third of that is over 10 milli equivalents of acid, okay? So there are ways to calculate like how much potassium bicarbonate or sodium bicarbonate to eliminate how much milli equivalents of acid that you're consuming. But I do, I try to consume um, either uh, potassium and sodium bicarbonate. There's, there's supplements that have combinations of those to help balance the potassium and s- uh, sodium better uh, or sodium citrate or um, there's even potassium citrate too. Um, that, and, and then also mineral waters. There's things like Gerald Steiner that has a, a good amount of bicarbonate, magnesia water. Um, the, the key with any type of bicarbonate, you just want to consume that bicarbonate at least 45 minutes prior to food. So the bicarbonate will increase the pH in the stomach, um, but after about 45 minutes, it's fully out of the stomach and absorbed. And so then it wouldn't affect the um, acid in your stomach to digest food and absorb nutrients. In fact, when you take bicarbonate, there seems to be a compensatory increase in acid secretion later on. So if people who have like achlorhydria or don't um, secrete enough acid to dissolve their food, actually potentially bicarbonate supplements may, um, through the compensatory mechanism later on, uh, improve their acid secretion.